you lovely people of god thank you for tuning in to stepping into purpose if you are a new subscriber welcome to stepping into purpose today is chatty tuesdays now today we are going to be discussing preparation so what is it that you need to put into consideration when you are about into, to walk into your god-given purpose so I have to highlight that the most important thing you have to do is to make sure that you plan and you prepare for taking this journey. It is a journey and just like every other journey, you need to make sure that you've got the right equipment, you've got the right people with you and you've considered what is it that might get in the way and what is it that I can do to make sure that I overcome. Now for you to know how you'll be able to overcome, you need to read the word of God to see what is it that the men of God or the people of God or people who follow Christ, what is it that got into the way and how do they overcome, how do they deal with those situations, okay. I'll start off by sharing uh, from 1 Peter 4, which reads um, that God gives us good and bad times. Whenever you're walking in your God-given purpose or in a ministry, there will be good times. There will be times when things are going so well for you, but there are also bad times. The Word of God says that there is a time for everything. There's a season for rain. There's a season for sun. There's a season for happiness, and there is a season for sadness. So you need to prepare yourself knowing that it's not always going to be rosy, but there are things that are going to be getting in the way. There are things and challenges that are going to be rising before you, but you need to make sure that you're fully equipped so that you know how to overcome those challenges is how to defeat those uh, giants that come your way how can you slay the dragon how can you slay the giants what is it that you can do when people say negative things to you what is it how do you respond what do you say if we look at Ezra, um, Ezra, he prepared his heart. It reads in Ezra 7 that he prepared his heart. So he set his heart to study the law of God, to practice it, to teach it, its statutes and um, ordinances in Israel. So he devoted his life in studying the law before he went out there to do what he was called by God to do. So you need to make sure that you're preparing your heart, indulging in the word of God day and night, meditate upon the word of God so that you'll be able to listen and follow the instructions of God. He devoted his life. So which means he isolated himself. You need to make sure that you isolate yourself sometimes, especially when you're preparing to do what God has given you to do. Isolate yourself, put yourself away, whether it's social media, it's friends, whatever it is that might get in the way, whatever challenges that, I'm, uh, that might arise, you need to make sure that you isolate yourself to prepare your heart, to devote your life, to set your heart, to study the law of God. I was watching one of these videos and uh, one of the ladies was explaining that the law of God, it means that it's the standards of God. What are God's standards? So if you are to walk into your God-given purpose, what sort of standards are you expected to meet? Okay, so do not be afraid of what will happen to you. Yes, uh, going back to what we just spoke about, hard times will come. Hard times will come. What does that mean? The devil will put you to some put some of you in prison, he will test you and you will suffer for so many days, but be faithful. The word of God says this rainy season will come. Challenges will come, but be faithful, be faithful. Even if you have to die, you have to prepare yourself for death. It could be physical death, but also spiritual death. It self has to die. You have to make sure that you're ready to give up your old ways. You're ready to walk in the path of God. You're ready to align yourself even if it comes at the cost of death if you continue to be faithful God is saying that I will reward you for your life okay if you look in the revelation um, Jesus Christ who is the son of God himself who is God himself people made fun of him even his friends left him he was a man who suffered a lot of pain sicknesses and he was treated as someone of no importance like someone people will not even look at but turn away from in disgust. This is what we are supposed to be expecting when we are walking in our God-given purpose. For the word of God says that we are not as superior than our master who is Jesus Christ. So if he walked that, then we are supposed to suffer the way that he suffered. So he is saying people make fun of him. So who are you for people not to make fun of you when Jesus the son of God, who is God himself, who was made fun of by people, you are more likely to go through a 
the same thing or similar thing. His friends left him. This goes back to isolation. When you are doing what God calls you to do, you are most likely to have some people walk out of your life because they do not allow with your purpose. They are not going along or getting along with what God has placed in you. Some friends, they push you into doing things that are against the will of God or against his word. So it means that they will come a time when people will have to walk away from you or God will have to isolate you from the other people. God was treated badly by force. He was taken away by force and judged unfairly. People will judge you. Definitely. Not everyone is going to agree with what you're saying. Not everyone is going to agree with what you're doing. Not everybody is going to agree with your vision or even understand it. But it's okay. Okay. He was buried among the wicked. Women lost loved ones. People were tortured. Others were tied up, put in prison. They were killed with stones, cut off in half. They were killed with swords. And um, the only clothes some of them had were sheepskins and goats. Since they were poor, persecuted, they were treated badly. God God was pleased with all of them because of their faith. This is what some of the men of God or women of God went through when they were walking their God-given purpose. When they were following Christ, they were studying the law and doing, saving um, the sinners and asking people to repent. This is what they went through. They were put in prison. In this day and time, it might not necessarily mean the same prison that was referred to a couple of hundreds years ago, but it might mean certain prisons, for example, spiritual prison. It might mean that people may put you in a box, people may judge you. You uh, may put you in a certain prison in a mindset, maybe you're going crazy, or they might give you labels, there might be a stigma following around you. Prison can mean a different things in this day and time. They were killed by swords. Words can kill you, words can destroy you. Certain people can react in a certain way that might kill you. But God is saying that He was pleased with all of them. They suffered to make sure that the gospel was spread. They suffered for the good news of the Lord so that sinners were saved, so that people repented and they did not live their lives of sin. But God was pleased because of their faith. We all have these great people around us who are examples you need to make sure that you're studying and preparing yourself for the word of god so that you see who went through what what is it that came in their way they are examples so that when you face a similar situation you will know and you have a rough idea or what is it that you should do in order to overcome? It also says, don't be surprised when people of this whole world hate you. You will be hated. You will be criticized. You'll be persecuted. You will be, um, all sorts of things will happen to you because people of the world hate people of God. They do not hate the people. They hate the people of God. Why? Because the enemy does not want you to do good things, does not want you to walk in your God-given purpose. He does not want you to live a righteous sin. Making matters worse, he does not even want you to help others live a righteous life. So the world will hate you because the enemy is the one who hates good things. He's the one who hates when people turn around from doing the things that are against the word of God. So he will make sure that certain people will turn against you. Going back to my... <coughs> videos that I did on Saturday where I spoke about Peter and uh, Paul and Barnabas actually when they migrated to another city where God had called them to do certain things and after they had turned a lot of people around so this is when they were persecuted and they were thrown out of the city they shook off their dust they moved on you need to watch that video I'll put the link in the description box but the world will hate you but you need to shake off the dust and you need to move on okay if God wants you to suffer you should trust your life to him so if it means he needs you to walk and to get to the deepest part of the waters. You need to have trust. Trust comes with reading the word of God. Trust comes with devoting your life to read the word of God so that you understand knowing God increases your knowledge and when it increases your knowledge, increases your will. Going back to what I was saying, servants are no greater than their masters. If people treated me badly, they will treat you badly too. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours too. They will do to you whatever they did to me. Why? Because you belong to me. So if you move on to John 15, he's saying, I am telling you these things, all of this now to prepare you. The truth is you will cry and you'll be sad, but the world will be happy. Your sadness does not make the world sad because the world hates you, remember? But the world will be happy. You will be sad, but then your sadness will turn into 
happiness okay be brave you have defeated the world be brave you have defeated the world whenever you're going through tough challenges it is like a woman who is giving birth to a baby she has pain because her time has come but when the baby is born she forgets the pain she forgets that because she is so happy that a child has been born into the world it is the same with you now you are saved but you will see again and you'll be happy you will have joy no one can take away uh god says i have told you this thing so that you can have peace in me in this world you will have many troubles other point i like to highlight is what are we to do so that we may habitually be doing the works of god and god is saying in order for you to do the work of God, you need to believe, you need to adhere to, you need to trust in him. You need to rely only on him and have faith in whom he has sent you. Okay, faith is built when you read the word of God. When you hear the testimonies of other people, make sure that you always put your trust in God. Tell him all your problems. God is your place of safety. People cannot really help you. You cannot depend on them. They will always let you down, but God will never let you down. There is one thing you can really depend on, and it is Christ. Strength comes from God. Victory and honor comes from God, and he is the mighty rock where you are safe. And this scripture is from Psalm 62, uh, verses 7 to 11. He is the mighty rock where you are safe. Dwell in the word of God. Dwell in his ways. Dwell in his law. Follow his law. Build your trust only in God. Because sometimes the people that we lean on tend to, can be used by the enemy to uh, tell us or to advise us to do things that do not agree with what God is saying. Build your trust in God and your foundation is firm. God will start placing certain individuals in your life who will help you in this journey that you're on, which means you will start losing friends as we've just highlighted and new friends will start coming your way. They will build you. The word of God says iron sharpens iron. Okay. But you still have to be careful. So this is when you are supposed to be praying for the spirit of discernment. Because, for example, if you look at the example of Jesus Christ, when uh, he was telling his disciples that he was going to be crucified, and uh, Peter said to him, he said, God save you from those suffering, Lord. That will never happen to you. I'm sure Peter was saying in a way of saying, God, you can go, you cannot die. But you know what Jesus said? He had the spirit of wisdom understanding knowledge and discernment and he said get away from me satan some people will seem like they are comforting you or they're good for you or they're for you but here they might be against you yes you might need to go through it and then you've got another person who might say to you oh uh you don't need to do that because you're god's child this and that should not be happening to you uh you're not supposed to be going through certain things because you're the child of god but you're supposed to discern is this god say speaking is this uh does this agree with the word of god the word of god has taught me that i'll go through sufferings that uh, i will cry i'll be sad but it has taught me that i'll be happy so maybe what i'm going through is only seasonal it, it, only, it is only temporary but i will overcome okay here we'll also read further god jesus say you are not helping me you don't care about the same things god does you only care about the things that make that people think are important okay so you need to be careful pray for the spirit of discernment and you need to be spiritually sensitive of the people that are around you and those that are going to be trying to be giving you some advice and help okay so we are still on the subject of friends um in the word of god it says you must not marry other nations if you do they will cause you to follow their gods but solomon fell in love with his women his wives caused him to turn away so solomon had 700 wives and his wives caused him to turn away from god when solomon was old his wives caused him to follow other gods so he did not follow the lord completely as his father david okay if we all understand law it says you go into bed with the wrong person does it mean sexually no it just means that you made a deal with the wrong kind of people okay so this is what we're supposed to apply especially when it comes to our environment and our surroundings what sort of people are we getting in bed with in terms of friends what sort of people are we hanging around with because what they believe 
in is most likely going to tap on you and you are going to be going to believe in that whatever it is that they worship it could be relationships it could be sex it could be social media whatever idols they serve if you keep on hanging around with them you are more likely to be more like them I like to highlight is to make sure that you forgive whoever has seen or say things that have hurt you in the past when you're walking your god-given purpose you need to pray for a heart that is able to forgive because on some day god will ask you to pray for those people or those people might actually be saved through your ministry and if you've not forgiven if you're still bitter and then um it might defeat the whole purpose it might uh hinder you from progressing and moving forward you might find yourself saying bitter things bitter words and acting a certain way when you are supposed to be helping those people okay so you need to make sure you commit everything that you do and god will establish your plans okay so okay so thank you guys for watching this video right till the end if you've got any questions please feel free to inbox me or to comment don't forget to like share subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you do not miss any of my videos